start with the pancreas, and then we'll finish on the other side. All right, so the pancreas. Um, the pancreas we'll talk about a little bit in lab today because it is also part of the <coughs> gastrointestinal system or the GI or digestive system. Um, but we also talk about the pancreas when we talk about the endocrine system as well. The pancreas lies along the bottom of the stomach, and it kind of sits behind the stomach a little bit. Um, when we look at it, the head of the pancreas starts like right here along the first segment of the small intestine. And then the pancreas tapers off towards the left side of the body as we head towards the spleen. Again, it has both digestive um, and endocrine functions. So the pancreas has exocrine, and it makes exocrine secretions that get released into some sort of an open area, some sort of a lumen. Um, and in this case, it's in the GI tract. And then it also has endocrine cells that make our hormones. Most of the pancreas is exocrine, okay, like 99% of it. Most of it is just making secretions that go into the intestines to help us digest food. Very little of it is actually endocrine making hormones. Here we see the pancreas. Um, so this would be situated like this in the body, right? Like this is like right here, and this tapers off towards the left side of the body, and the spleen would be over here. Um, when we look at the pancreas, this is the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. So like the stomach is right up here, the stomach empties into the duodenum, um, that's the pancreas. So the pancreas has a head, this big round portion, a neck, the body is the main section, and then the tail is like the last little section that tapers off towards the spleen. Um, here you can see these ducts down the middle. These are part of the exocrine pancreas. So these ducts are part of the, um, the digestive system. Those are not actually part of the endocrine system. Um, again, most of this, 99% of it's actually gonna be exocrine associated with the GI tract. The endocrine pancreas has cells that are organized into the pancreatic islets or islets of Langerhans. So every once in a while in the pancreas, you'll see these little clusters of cells grouped together that are endocrine, that actually make hormones that are gonna go into the bloodstream. When we look at these islets of Langerhans, we see that there are four different types of cells present. Alpha cells, beta cells, delta cells, and F cells. We're gonna focus on these first two. Um, the reason for that is that delta cells make somatostatin, and that um, is gonna to have to do with the GI system and digestion and gastrointestinal stuff. Um, the F cells secrete pancreatic polypeptide, again, has to do with digestion. So when we go through digestive, we'll talk about both of these um, and the hormones and what they do. Right now, we're gonna focus on the first two. Alpha cells in the pancreas are important for producing glucagon. We release glucagon when we have low blood glucose. So we do not have enough glucose in the blood, we release glucagon. Glucagon then increases blood glucose levels. Beta cells produce insulin, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Insulin is released when we have high blood glucose. So if I just eat a meal, I've got a bunch of sugar in my blood, I'm gonna release insulin from my beta cells. Insulin then works to lower blood glucose. Okay, so both alpha cells and beta cells in the pancreas are extremely important for um, controlling our blood glucose levels. Okay, one of them will, it will increase the amount of glucose in the blood, one will decrease the amount of glucose in the blood. So glucagon and insulin are antagonists, right? They have opposite effects. So next class, we'll finish up with all the details on glucagon and insulin, and then we'll talk a little bit about diabetes, and then we'll review.